In this video, we're going to discuss vapor pressure calculations in a pure liquid. So while tables like this are wonderfully handy, what if we want to just calculate out what the vapor pressure will be? What if we don't have a handy table for another material, say, other than water? Well, there is ways to do it. Because the vapor pressure is based on the distribution of energy and how many of your particles are high enough in energy to break free from your liquid to have the necessary enthalpy of vaporization. As your temperature changes, the proportion that have that will change as well. Well, we won't derive the math. There's a nice calculation that lets us perform this. It's the clausius caperon equation. This says that the natural log of your pressure 2 over pressure 1 is going to be equal to the delta H of vaporization over R. That will be a negative delta H of vaporization for pressure 2 over pressure 1. All this is times 1 over temp 2 minus 1 over temp 1. If you know the energetics to break free and you know how much vapor pressure there is at one temperature, you can solve what the pressure temp for the other is at another temperature or pressure. Let's do an example here. Let's pull some info from our chart. We're going to use 60 degrees and 149 torr, and we're going to calculate out what it would be at 90 degrees. We're going to need the delta H of vaporization. For water at 100 degrees Celsius, that is normally 40.7 kilojoules per mole. Technically, it does alter very slightly at different temperatures. You would have to incorporate a little bit more thermal energy to get it up to 100 from our 90. And so that would need to be incorporated into the delta H of vaporization if we're finding it at 90 degrees. However, that change is usually very small compared to the actual energy of vaporization. If you remember our calculations for phase changes, the energy of heating water was significantly less than the energy of vaporizing water. And so it usually isn't a very large air introduced. So we'll just go ahead and use our standard at boiling point temp for delta H. This means I have my second temp, that's 90. I have my first temp, that's 60, and I have my first pressure, that's 149.4. What I'm trying to find is pressure 2. What would that pressure at 90 degrees be? How close is it to the table value here? Well, let's solve. I have natural log of P2 over P1, which I can separate into the natural log of P2 minus the natural log of P1, or 149.4. That's going to equal the negative, let's put it into joules, 40,700 joules per mole over R, which is our gas law constant, 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. And our temp difference is 1 over, well, temp 2 is 90 Celsius. I need this in Kelvin, as that's comes from our R value, and we're looking for the absolute difference in our temperatures. So I need to solve Kelvin, 90 plus 273, 363. So 363 Kelvin minus 1 over, well, 60 degrees will be 30 less, so 333 Kelvin. Run a few of those values. The natural log of our pressure 2 minus... 5.00663 is going to equal 1.21494. So this will give us another negative, which will cancel that negative, and so we get a positive value out as we multiply and divide all this. I need to adjust, so I need to add 5.00663 to both sides. Natural log of pressure 2 is going to equal 6.22157. E to both sides, pressure 2 is going to be 503.49 torr. 
basically 503 Tor, which if we compare is close. As I said earlier, there's a little bit of error. Our delta H of vaporization was written for 100 degrees. We are slightly off by about 5%. That's within reasonable error, especially for a quick calculation like this. And so we can reasonably identify approximately what the vapor pressure will be. And this will work for any liquid as long as we know it's delta H of vaporization. Now, the one problem with this is that we generally need to know a temperature and a vapor pressure for any specific liquid. So if we want to do the same problem with, say, ethanol, I would need to know, well, what's ethanol's vapor pressure at some starting temperature so that I could find its vapor pressure at another. However, we can always do that with its boiling point. Well, finding the vapor pressure at a temp for a specific liquid might be a little bit more trouble to find a random temperature. We always know it's boiling point vapor pressure, and most liquids' boiling points are pretty easy to look up. Because the vapor pressure must be equal to the external pressure at the boiling point, we always know that the pressure is going to be 760 torr, if we're at sea level, at whatever the boiling point of that liquid is. So we always have a pressure one and a temp one available to us as long as we know the boiling point. This makes it much easier to then calculate a second one as long as we can look up delta H vaporization for that. And those are usually available in various data tables. This is the main use of the classes Capron equation. Rather than referencing large data tables for every liquid, for every temp, we can just calculate it out if we know the boiling point and the delta H of vaporization. So in fact, let's give that a try. Ethanol, boiling point is equal 78 degrees Celsius and has a delta H of vaporization of 38.6 kilojoules per mole. Using this data, we're gonna solve the vapor pressure at 50 degrees Celsius. We'll have one temperature but also gives me the pressure because it's the boiling temperature. So this must be 760 torr at that boiling point. So I have one temp and one pressure. I have another temp. I can solve the last pressure. Natural log of pressure two minus natural log of 760 torr is going to equal negative 38,600 joules per mole over 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. One over temp two, which was 50 degrees Celsius, so 273 plus 50, 323, 323 Kelvin, for 78 degrees Celsius, which is 351. Multiply this out, my natural log of pressure two, Minus 6.63332 is equal to negative 1.14664. This time I have a larger value minus a smaller, so this will stay positive times the negative will be negative. So this looks good. I'm going to plus 6.63332 to both sides. Natural log of pressure two should equal 5.48668 E to both sides, my pressure to 241.45 torr. And since my table data says it should be about 222 torr, we're pretty well in the vicinity. Again, we're a little bit off for being delta H introducing slight air but we can roughly ballpark the vapor pressure for any liquid using the Cassius Capron equation. Well, this is true for pure liquids. It'll also be very useful when looking at non-pure liquids, which we'll discuss in further videos.